Hello and welcome. I am Count Christo, this is Hearts of Iron 4, and we're going to be playing today as the United States of America. Now, I know what you're saying, that's way too easy, but what we're going to do, as you can see over here, is we're going to hugely strengthen Italy, Germany, the Soviets, and Japan. Now, win condition does involve taking over the Soviet Union. Um, I think our win condition is going to be... Hmm. Well, okay. Bronze, take out the, uh, the German Reich and the Axis. Silver is take out the Soviet Union as well, and gold is every single nation in the world has to be democratic. Mm. That last one, I don't know if it's possible, because I'm not sure we're going to be able to... Oh no, it will be, because we can just boost party popularity. Okay, yeah, so world, world of democracy under the United States is, uh, is place number one. And we're also on veteran difficulty, which is going to be a bit of a problem, <laughs> I think, because you see down there it gives you political power minus 25, and this gives us political power, daily political power plus, plus one. Normally you'd gain one, per day, right? Uh, if you're using a focus. This takes it down to zero. Uh, I think this might take it down to negative 2.5, not 0.25. I'm not sure. It might be that it just takes it, it might go weird and take it to, rather than just zero, which would be this plus your focus, it might take it to like positive, because it's reducing the things that would be taking away political power. We'll have to see uh, once we get in there. I'm just going to read off some of these bonuses because they are insane. So planning and entrenchment speed plus 50%. Holy crap, that's really good. I've never played, by the way, in anything other than regular with none of these on, so I've, I have no experience of how, how this is going to go. Um, supply consumption down, that's really good. Division recovery rate plus 30%, that's insane. Reinforce rate plus 4%, meh, it's all right. Doing attack and defense plus 30% on core territory, that's really good. That's gonna make pushing into the Soviets really challenging. Division attrition minus 15%, that's okay. Production efficiency cap plus 30% and production efficiency growth plus 50%. That's ridiculous, that's absolutely ridiculous. Political power growth, I'm not that concerned about. Research time, that's going to give them a huge edge. They're going to have everything ahead of us. They get loads more experience uh, in terms of the level of their troops and the amount of army experience they get, which is pretty bad. And then on top of that, we have production efficiency cap minus 20%, which at the beginning of the game is going to mean like 50% less production. That's insane. Then we've got research time plus 10%, which is pretty horrendous. Political power gain minus 25%. And I'm not sure how that last one's going to play out, but let's jump on in here and uh, and see Iron Man United States uh, I hope we're not gonna have a negative political power about that balance that just seems grossly unfair okay let's see <clears throat> we are we freaking are oh god okay so it's giving us 0.5 at the moment let's see if it goes negative point uh, well let's go for the one that's gonna give us these ones give us political power don't they yeah each of these gives us 150 political power so yeah we're going um, we're going allies, we're staying democratic, we're not doing any shenanigans in that regard. Why isn't... Oh, my keyboard's not working. That's really weird. Oh, there we go. Okay, um, yeah, we're going allies, we're uh, not going to shift ideology, we're not going to do any of that shenanigans, because while fun, it is a bit, a bit cheaty. It makes the US a bit too easy, I think. So we're going to go world democratic, we're staying democratic. Um, so... Now, the difficulties as the US is you can't do this until we've got 20% world tension and someone has to be in offensive war. That usually happens when Japan is in offensive war, basically. Um, you can't do this one until we're at war with one of the majors or we're at war, we're at war with a country with against us and they're quite strong compared to us. Or 95% world tension, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, as I recall, uh, there's one of these yeah, this one, right? 40% world tension, or at war. Okay, and this one here lets us go to war with Venezuela. So I think we're going to probably try that. Not least because Venezuela supplies a lot of oil to the Axis, uh, often. So I think we might try and go to war with them, and then... Uh, so we're going to rush down this tree, I think. That gives... that's quite good. This one, oh, see, that one requires us to be at war as well. So what we're going to want to do is go down here, go to war with Venezuela, and then do this one. Uh, no, sorry, do this one and do this one. And we're going to want to have done that one and this one and this one before we start the war with Venezuela. Uh, yeah. Because we currently have some horrendous laws, right? We're in undisturbed nationalism. Look at those modifiers. They're truly horrendous. 50% slower construction and conversion. Right, that's awful. 
and we can't generate a war goal basically ever and we can't join a faction basically ever look, look what happens if i try and generate against mexico okay we require the world to be at 200 percent it physically can't be at 200 percent so this means you may never declare war um disarm nation free market those those aren't so bad you can switch off this right no because we have undisturbed isolation but there is a uh, a focus this one yeah which changes us to a volunteer only which is okay now uh construction wise we have lots of factories which is really good but we don't have many military factories only 10 which is not very many and uh think like that probably yeah that looks good uh no actually i want some uh, carrier naval bombers being produced i think uh let's just put the ships down to the bottom okay so let's let's uh let's look at our civilian, civilian factories i think what i want to do is produce I'm debating between long term and short term. I think this is a long campaign. We're going to have to, you know, it's a big war. We're going to have to win. Let's build some civilian factories. Let's just get one, just one more military factory first. And then we're going to go heavy on civilian factories. And we're going to build a lot of these, right? Lots of them. Um, just so that long term we have that, that bonus. Now, uh, research, we're going to play the long game. So we don't need to get many military focuses, mili military research very early on. So I'm going to go for, except obviously we're going to need to start doing land doctrine pretty soon because uh, land doctrine takes absolutely freaking ages to uh, to do. Now, do we have anything that gives us a bonus to land doctrine? It doesn't look like we do. Okay, so we're just going to have to start land doctrine. I think we're going to have one slot just dedicated to land doctrine. That might have been a mistake. Do we want superior firepower? It's a really good doctrine. It gives you a lot of soft attack. Let's let's take the time. Okay, so 20% soft attack. Fantastic. 10% organization. Pretty good. Although most of the things have that. 20% defense. Pretty good. And then you've got this choice, right? You can go to integrated support or dispersed support. This helps line artillery. And this helps support companies. Now, line artillery is really good. I don't know if line... Is line artillery... Does that cover rockets? Yes, it does. Hmm. <laughs> because we're going to have two units of... Um, the ideal division is going to be very familiar to you if you've watched previous ones. It's going to be like that in terms of artillery. Now, how much artillery is there in support company? There's 24. And in one of these, there's... Uh, what does that make it? 36. Yeah, so there's more artillery. Just straight up more artillery in, uh, in your line artillery than in your support in my typical division. Even if you have two units of artillery in your support, which you'd have by adding rocket artillery here. So that being the case, I think I will go uh, Disperse Support, and then it, these two. I don't recall which of these is better. Okay, so Soft Attack 5%, pretty good. Not that good. All Infantry get Recovery Rate, that's good. Tanks get stuff, that's good. Recovery Rate for Tanks, that's good. Shock and All, Hard Attack and Soft Attack, 10%, that's pretty good. Okay, Concentrated Fire Plans, Hard Attack versus Soft Attack. I'd rather have, ooh, though it's 10%. Mm, late game against the Soviets, they'll have lots of tanks. Okay, so 10% there. 10% and 10% there, but we got the whole army here, or just tanks there. That's interesting. 2% reinforce rate, not that good. Organization, air support. Okay, no, this side's better, I think, because that's just for... Yeah, that 10%, 10% for all army divisions. That's pretty fantabulous. Okay, so dockyards-wise. Now, fleet-wise, we have a big freaking fleet. Uh, but you've got to remember, our enemies... Our enemies are numerous, and they have ridiculous bonuses. I wanted to weaken uh, France and Britain, but unfortunately there's no option to do that. Um, so we're going to... To start off with, let's just gather... Let's do the usual thing with fleets. Let's just gather every single one into one place. And I'm going to focus more on fleets this playthrough, because we've done almost nothing on fleets so far, and I want to uh, show off some of the fun things you can do with fleets. I by no means claim to be an expert at using fleets, but uh, I don't think I'm too shabby, so... We'll see what we can do. Everyone go to Boston. Good. Okay, uh, air-wise, we're going to do the same thing. Everyone that's not on a carrier, we're just going to disband the usual usual standard standard play. Uh, let's just disband all these. Sorry about the uh, noise. It shouldn't be too bad. Now I've got my audio balance sorted. Okay, good. So that's all the planes gone, except for the ones that are on uh, carriers. How many carriers do we have? Three. Now, you want to have, at maximum, I believe, three f uh, carriers per fleet. 
because carriers, uh, when you have more than that, start affecting each other. The, the idea being there's not room in the sky over the, pl over the fleet to fly that many planes, right? So um, you want to have max of three f carriers. So if we're going to have, let's say, two fleets, you want six carriers, maybe two in reserve. So we definitely want some more carriers, is the long and the short of my, uh, my ramblings just there. So let's get another carrier. Ooh, we're at level two already. Nice. Okay, how long is that going to take? Four freaking years. Okay, so we're going to need lots more stuff banging on the carrier. Uh, let's... <laughs> the only problem with these bigger uh, production interfaces is that everything goes a bit hard to select. But there we go. So we're just going to do the normal, knock all those down to one. I'm not that worried about German subs. They never seem to use loads and loads of subs. And we've got quite a lot of destroyers already, so I'm feeling pretty, pretty good about that. Um, so we're going to bang out that, then bang out that, then bang out that, and then focus on carriers. Carriers are king um, in naval battles, in my opinion. So we're going to use use lots of those, and we want more bombers. So we want to go less less fighters, more bombers. This is the default air wings that the carriers will request as soon as they're produced. Uh, two factories doing that, I think, will be plenty um, once this production efficiency gets up. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Our cap is 30%. That's horrendous. Okay, yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna. So, we need to have that one, that one, and that one done by the time we get to this one. So, I think I'm gonna go down this one first. Uh, is that right? No, I want to be able to get that one as soon as possible. So, I'm gonna get this one and then go down here. And then once the world tension gets high enough, what does it need to be? 20% world tension in Japan. So basically when Japan declares war, you can do that one. Okay, so let's go with the WPA. Millions of people are still suffering from unemployment resulting from the Great Depression. An agency to put these people to work on public projects may not fully solve the problem, but the Work Progress Administration is a step in the right direction. Sounds good. Let's do that. Okay, insufficient resources, really? Ah, oh, we've no rubber. Okay, we're going to do some um, synthetic factories then. Uh, who are we going to trade with? Uh, British Malaya, sounds good. Um, oh god, it is going to go down. That's just that's just horrendous. <laughs> well, I wanted a tricky playthrough. I'm going to get a tricky playthrough. Okay, now, uh, units. Okay, so here's a question. Do we garrison all these islands? I think the answer's no. We do garrison the Philippines, because there are... Um, there are resources here, aren't there? No, there's no resources here, but there are some factories here in our in our puppet. And obviously our puppet's going to take some focuses or give them more factories. Um, so well, I'm, I'm going to abandon most of these. Because the thing is, I'm not concerned about... If we have a naval base over here, that's fine. We don't need to have a naval base here and here and here and here and here and here and all over the place. We just need a naval base, you know, in range of Japan, and this is in range of Japan. Uh, we'll, we'd naval invade from here up to the normal Nagasaki. Is that Nagasaki? Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to get all these divisions and have them come home. Uh, let's put them in an army. Let's just garrison this area here. Uh, any units I missed? Puerto Rico? Yeah, we don't need that. Don't need that. No one's going to attack there. Okay, we should probably leave the guy up in in there, but the rest of these three can come here. So, we, we will have a port's defence. Uh, ports? Okay, and that have that. Have the usual blue anchor symbol. Great. Uh, I will defend Anchorage. Uh, is there anything actually that useful up here? Mm, no, but there's some core population, which is important. You don't want to lose core population. Uh, the other ports that I'm going to want to garrison. I'm not concerned about the east coast. No Axis troops are going to get in range of our each east coast. But since I'm not garrisoning those islands, I am going to garrison uh, this coast. As I said at the beginning, I have never played, ever, on any difficulty other than normal or um, you know, just standard difficulty, no AI bonuses, none of that. So I have no idea how this will go. Uh, it could be, we could get totally curb stomped, but I hope not. I'm going to do the thing I did last time and disband all the units I see as undesirable. So all these divisions, all these, um, what you call them, garrison divisions, they're just too small. 
so I'm going to get rid of them. And it would cost too much army experience to improve them. We want a proper infantry division like that. Are there any other? So we've got the National Guard division. Oh, that's too wide. No, I don't want those. Let's disband those two. Oh, actually, let's not because we can't train. No, we've, we're no, we're in no hurry to train people. We're going to run out of manpower long before we're going to run out of. Well, let's just put a bunch in the queue because you can only, if you don't know, you can only train. There you go, seventy-five percent of your num com current number in the field. But if you set them all training, and then delete them, I believe that will work. Okay, so which one is coming first? This one. Okay, so are these the National Guard divisions down here? Yes. So let's select a bunch of these. I don't know how high it goes. Oh, let's just change the, obviously, my, silly me. Let's just change the uh, icon there. Oh, goodness, there's lots of them. So yeah, all of these guys, I'm going to disband them straight up. We're at no risk of imminent attack, so I don't feel at all bad about doing that. Okay, we're down to seven divisions, and with that, we shall defend the free world. No problem. Uh, put them into ports. Garrison down here and here. One of these on each port should be absolutely plenty. We could, we don't actually have enough for one on each port yet. <laughs> uh, but as I said, as you know, now that we've done that, these guys will fill up fairly rapidly. See, there you go. Lots of lots of equipment down there. We just need more artillery and support equipment. Yeah, let's bump support equipment a little bit. How many spare carrier fighters do we have? Uh, none. Okay. <laughs> Right, okay, let's let time go. So our political power is going negative. That's that's quite painful. But then again, I mean, what would we spend political power on normally? A military theorist. We do want to get a military theorist. Specifically the superior firepower expert. But he's 250. Can we just get a normal military theorist? No. That's annoying. I mean, we'd want to get an armaments... Not armaments organiser. War industrialist. And we'd want to switch these, but we can't switch these. We want to switch this, but we can't switch this. So it's no great loss, really, that we can't, uh, that we don't have much political power yet. Uh, these guys, ooh, blimey, we had some guys miles away. I wonder where they were. We don't have some weird territory over here, do we? No? Cool. We're guaranteeing all of uh, America, which is why they're all green to us. They all like us because we're guaranteeing them. What are you? Oh, you're the, uh, the guy over here. The Puerto Rico Department. This is a pretty good starting infantry division, I like this. We just have to add in two artillery and the recon, and then we're up to the kind of mid-level mid level guy. Free dockyards. Really? Why? Oh, we've finished all the other ones. Cool. So we're building this guy. He's reduced by 30% because of lack of resources. We're going to have to trade for some chromium. We can put bang out one a year. That's good. This is the right number to be producing, I think. We need more convoys. We're going to have lots of troops in, in uh, the mainland. So let's just bang out some more convoys. Uh, let's merge all these guys up. Any more for any more? Yes, this submarine squadron, which is on its way. Cool. Okay, Chromium, please. Uh, United Kingdom, that's good. We want to support our allies by trading with them. Oh, that's really painful. What are we going to do about that? I guess we're going to have to just spend some time without a national focus picked. Would be my guess. We're just going to have to not do these, basically. I thought I want that. I want both of those. Especially that one. Minus 5% on all fleet costs. That's really good. Mm. And that one as well. Possibly strategic. Well, no, we're probably going with air support rather than strategic bombing. Hmm, <laughs> hmm, Yeah, we're going to have to spend some time without a uh, focus set, in which case, while we're like that, we'll get the plus one, but plus 0.5 a day. That means we have to spend as much without a focus set as we do with a focus set. That's horrendous. Although, actually, because lots of these are going to give us political power, we'll probably have a net gain from that. Not sure. Cool. So we're going to have an election shortly to decide whether we like this, where we want to have this guy, or we want to have another guy. If we pick the other guy, we get free. We get this free. Uh, which gives you, you know, that's effectively giving you 150 political power. Um, worrying indeed. Uh, next one. So yeah, we can't do... Oh, we can do these. But we're not going to yet. Let's do the Monroe Doctrine. Um, yes, there's going to be an election, but I believe there are some bonuses for sticking with this guy that appear later on. What I'm probably going to do is between this episode and the next, I'm going to check out what those bonuses are. Uh, okay, I want subs, and I want them to our other high-level naval base. Well, there was an eight, wasn't there? Yep, there we go. Oh, not you. You stay up there in Boston. 
subs come down here and I'm going to split it in two and call this uh, imaginative that I am sub one and sub two okay and we're going to use these to hopefully prevent uh, any any German ships going uh, sorry any German convoys moving around here uh, give them some commanders uh, have we got any sea wolves doesn't look like it well we'll just give them the third and fourth best commanders that we have then we're going to leave them based out of Philadelphia for now and now this fleet I think we're going to keep it all together for now I reckon uh, but we may well Ooh, that's weird no I don't want any carrier close air support uh, let's delete all those I want you to have 20 fighters each uh, just quickly do that. Oops, 20, not 20, not uh, 21. There we go. Now we're going to need some serious naval bombage. Now, how many is that we need? Uh, 36? No, 25. Yeah. So, obviously, we won't be able to fill these requests just yet, but uh, in the fullness of time, these will fill up. There we go. Marvellous. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave the big fleet all in one thing though, uh, not the subs, the subs can go down to Philadelphia. But the big fleet I'm going to keep all together because I'm concerned, I'm very concerned about this uh, maxed out difficulty on these guys. They're going to be powering out, look at that, they've already got two things up, that's insane. Um, I suppose they're getting like three political power at the moment because they've got Hitler which gives them plus one. Hmm. <laughs> Obviously Canada's going to be on our side so we don't need to worry about... Uh, Protecting that border or anything. Uh, with our subject, this is a puppet. Can we train troops out of puppets? Yes. Okay, so if we train from the Philippines. Uh, copy that. Oh, I can't train it. If I, oh no, that was a mistake. We're going to look into that. Um, I believe we're able to. Um, let's give it a different icon so we know they're weaker. That one. Right. Um, because they're a puppet. How do I see the effects of that? There we go. Subject manpower requirement plus 90%. Okay, so I think that means I can make divisions with their manpower, but my equipment, that I then get control over, and they have to foot 90% of the manpower bill. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So I think we're going to do lots of that. How much manpower is there over here in the Philippines? Oh, there's a couple of million. Oh yeah, it looks like at least 10 million, 8 million. Great, okay, so we're going to mobilize lots of uh, Filipinos to fight in our army for us. That'll be great. Um, there's that. Obviously, standard research speed uh, research first. Okay, but I think that's a, that's a good setup. First episode, of course, the first episode is always going to be lots of setup, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it regardless, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.